Hey there everyone, Faish here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to talk about Rovi, which is an open source project, really fun to work with, with on. And probably your next open source contribution might come up into the Rovi itself. So a few days ago, I posted a reel about introducing you this amazing open source project, which helps you to add additional layer of functionality on top of Firebase on my Instagram and on my YouTube as well. And a lot of you got curious about, hey, can we have a detailed video about Rovi? what it does and how can we make an open source contribution. So in this video, I will walk you through some of the details of what Rovi is, how you can connect it with the Firebase. I did try it out, absolutely loved it. And the best part is it's an open source project. So first start with how we can make a contribution into this open source project. Really fantastic, really fast going. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So let me take you onto the screen. So this is Rovi. And as you can see from the Rovi itself, it's a fantastic project and it says that, hey, we actually uh, allows you, the first line that they mentioned actually clearly says what their agenda is. Uh, build your product backend in low code, scalable, connect your database and create cloud functions without leaving your browser. So they want everything to be done in the browser, but I think there is a lot more to Rovi. It also adds a visual layer on your Firebase so that things could be much more easier in that manner. Of course, you need to give some permissions. They have their live playground as well. So maybe you don't want to connect your Firebase. So there's a, so many of the examples that you can play around and see that how IMDB and all these data with the cloud functions, uh, some of the NPMs, Twitter bots and all these things. So maybe you want to explore a little bit of the image to URL or something. Uh, you can just open them up and see that what they're doing, all these details about geolocation data and columns and all of them are there. Uh, you can try all these methods that how these uh, how you can add row heights and import the data, export the data. Maybe you want to fire up some web hooks, cloud functions, so you can try them out. The best way of getting started is first have a look on their GitHub. So as you'll move on their GitHub, you'll notice there is number of commits. So it's an active project, which is uh, getting updated every single day. And obviously, since this is a new start of the project, as you can see on their website also, uh, there's so much to work on with that. So for example, if you come up here, they mentioned what they can do. And by the way, they have over 30 plus field, which you can modify from the table itself. But notice here, they are very soon going to come up with MongoDB and Postgres. So maybe you can help them in writing a functionality of how they are providing hooks or how they're attaching to Firebase. Maybe you can help them to getting attached to MongoDB or Postgres. And that would be a fantastic contribution for your career detail. Uh, using the Rovi. So fantastic one. That's you can do. So coming back, as I was saying, into their GitHub, you can first take a look onto this one. And maybe you want to update something more. Maybe you don't want to go in technical that much. Yes, don't update their readme and send them a pull request. Not a good idea. But as you can see, they have this guided deploy on Rovi app and also onto the Google Cloud as well. But maybe you can help them how to set up this entire project on, it's an open source project, so entire open source can go on to something like Linode, DigitalOcean, AWS, there's a lot of cloud, cloud provider, so you can write a guide for them. So there's a lot of opportunities and things you can do. One thing that you can do is definitely hit a dot so that it loads up into the VS Code environment and we can jump into understanding, although it's a huge code base, it's going to take probably weeks or probably a couple of weeks to actually understand it. So if you open this up source, notice here there's a lot of things, very well organized, you can see that. Maybe you want to explore how they're writing hooks, hooks for basic search. You can go ahead and look for, okay, this is how the hooks are being designed. You want to see how to use the document title, this is how it is being designed. Uh, there are a lot of types that they define here, that what's the file that we want to have and all these things. So maybe you want to contribute that. So understanding such a massive code base is a challenge and a good exercise as well. So that's how you contribute into open source. Look at that, what all config files are there, how the DBs are being connected, what's, what are all the things. So go ahead, read this entire thing and maybe you'll be able to help how the Ruby is actually doing. Now, what I want to show you is how you can actually attach Rovi and can actually have some of the powers that you can have for the Firebase itself. Now, what I like about this is when you work into a Firebase project, as a developer, your life is 80% easier. You can see what the data is there, but maybe not all the people are that much tech friendly in your organization. Some just want to see what the database looks like. Some just want to have an edit functionality, uh, but not from the code base. They directly want to see the database in a tabular structure and can have this one. So you can give a granular access of admin, reader only, editor only through the tables. You all can do that. And of course, templates I've already walked through in the demo. There is a lot of templates that you can play around. In fact, when I was looking for the templates, ah, there was no shortage of it. Like, look at this. Look at this. 
what all you want to do. There is even tutorials and guides. Like there is insane amount of work that is going on into this project. Okay. So let me uh, talk about some of the cloud functions and how you can actually work with that. So I tried it in one of the repository or one of the project which was there in the Cloud Firestore. Let me try to do that again so that you can also see how is it happening. Really easy. All you need to have is a project on Firebase and that's all. Uh, we're going to create a new project. Uh, so project name is going to be uh, another tube. And then obviously I want to link it up with the Firebase. So it will just fetch up all the details of the Firebase project that you probably want to have. I have multiple ones, so I'll just select the manager. And by the time we obviously want to see that what manager actually looks like. So this is my manager. And if I open this up, uh, there are nothing much going on. So we have almost this project is nothing. <laughs> so we didn't do anything into this project, just a, a bare minimum, almost empty project up here. So let's go ahead and see how we can actually connect with this. I'll continue with this one. Now it will ask me a couple of uh, that, hey, where you want to enable services and all of that? Yes, I want to enable that. And the best part is you don't have to move into Firebase, add permissions and all of that. Since hooks are being called, we just saw in the code base, it does automatically everything that is all required for you. You just keep on clicking, see the all dots. You just keep on sitting up here and clicking on the next, 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 and your everything is attached. So that is what I love about it. And you can just open the Firebase rule page and just check out that how this is all going on in case you want to. So this is how uh, the database is, Firestore and all of this. So yeah, looking good. Okay, uh, in the data store mode, this can only be accessed from the Google Cloud Console. So yeah, please go ahead and do that. Uh, maybe this is a long old time project that I worked on. Uh, so yes. Hmm, interesting. Uh, let me just check because some of these projects are really, really old. Uh, the rules are not enabled. So let me walk you through with another another project where things actually make sense, which is a newer one of a project. This was designed a long, long ago. So let me go ahead and delete this old one and see that how this can be attached to a project where we actually can work on. So I was practicing out before actually recording the video. So let me go up back into this one, Firebase. And we'll go for code meet, which is relatively a new project that we worked on. Firestore database is enabled up here. There is nothing much going on into this one. Uh, yes, I tried and tested out with the Rovi. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the collection. Uh, that will be underscore Rovi. Underscore, please delete this. So that we can start fresh and also would like to delete this one because I was just playing around with the uh, stuff. So test C. I highly, highly recommend you. You will able to uh, be able to understand this entire thing once you actually connect your own some Firebase, some dummy project or something like this. So we go up here into the YouTube project. So let's go back. And there we go. Please load this up. Okay, so this is how you see for the first time that there is nothing. You can create your own tables in case you wish to or you can just import the data in case you wish to. When you click on new table, it allows you to actually uh, import the data and all these things. You can go ahead and work on with that. I will just use an existing table because it's easier to show the demo. Uh, I would like to use this country table. Uh, this is what I used. And I would say use this template. Once you use this, this is a primary collection or maybe you want to put it under some, under some collection. So that is also good. Collection name, I'm gonna call this one as YouTube because this collection doesn't exist. You can see that how this is going to display YouTube, table ID, templates, some of the thumbnails, description. Uh, then you can also restrict the access control and all these. So you can see fine grain controls are there, auditings and columns. Uh, you want to add created by, yes, of course, updated by, updated at, yeah, updated at. I want to add all these fields. I'm gonna just create this one and there we go. If I go back onto my, uh, this console and hit a refresh, you'll see something. And again, you have to give all the permissions. Notice here, the Rovi comes back. And right now, this is all the settings that I have. Uh, no schema, no field, nothing is there. I can actually go up here and add the rows. So I'm going to say, hey, just add a row. Notice how easy it is. I can just add fields like India. This field is locked. So I have to go and say, hey, unlock this field. And the capital is Delhi. 
And similarly, you can add more fields. And this is not like these are the only fields you have to go through. This is just a sample data. You can add more columns, rows, whatever you like. In fact, you can add more webhooks. Maybe some data is being changed. And based on what data is changed, I want to do certain tasks. For example, if this capital is getting changed, then I want to add one more row. Maybe that's the case. So you can go ahead and just click on the webhooks and provide all these cloud functions directly up here. No need to see that install anything in your browser, in your local host or something. Nothing, nothing is required. So you can go ahead and try this out. So once I do this, notice here one very interesting thing. If I need to close this. Yeah, this one too, get it back up here. And I just hit a refresh. And there we go, we got this YouTube. So Rovi actually adds the setting and I actually accidentally saved my settings in the document for ZZZs. Uh, but notice here, uh, I see all the data that is available to me. So created by, obviously, we added these fields. Updated by, these fields were added. The capital is Delhi and India. Now notice very carefully how I can modify all these things. That is the absolute fun. So code, obviously I want to unlock this and I want to add IN. So this is my country code. I come up here, notice nothing, but actually things are added. It's not auto refreshing, just like the Firebase. Uh, but I can see up here uh, that it's saying right now India and Delhi. Probably I need to save it here first. Yeah, my bad. I forgot to get out of this one. So I need to get away from this one and I can add more features. So flag, I can, you can notice here column settings. You can just add more values, edit type. Uh, there's a long list of all the types that you can have. So just have a look on this, what all you can do. Uh, that is fun. Let's go ahead and try this one more time. So notice here, this time it fetches in. Having fun a little bit more. Maybe somebody else wants to add a row. Uh, maybe we want to design a code country. So this is a code country. And the capital would be, uh, what should I, uh, editor? Wim should be capital. Wim can be capital for this one. And... Uh, maybe co something like that i have to do nothing i can just come here and see all these datas and fields being added come on i need to go outside of it to make sure that it actually works and probably a refresh would be nice and uh, there we go so we get all these delhi in and all of that so there we go we have added another field and notice here that Yes, the data is there. It is easy. You can see that the values you can actually go ahead and add it, add that. But the point is that this data is not easy for anybody to read. Probably we are from the tech background. It's easy for us. But for somebody who is not from the tech background, this is not a visual aspect that I can see the data. And the best thing what I like is that I can go ahead and invite members, uh, other people and can give them what the role I want to give them. Admin, editor, viewer, owner. So maybe somebody who can mess up with my database. I want to give him just the viewer permission and that's it. Maybe I don't want to give him an admin and owner access, can give him just the editor access so that they can manipulate some data. Uh, so something like this. You can very quickly fetch up an application using Rovi, Note, not have to worry about the database and stuff. So this is the basics, a really fantastic one. Let's go back to workspace, uh, continue setup. No, don't want to do it. And again, you can see the templates. There are a lot of well, Webflow databases, roadmaps. There is so much transactions, UTM links. So you can create just a bitly like a service just directly up here. Uh, so many examples are there. And that's what makes me excited. Probably as an open source contribution, you can add more such templates. That would be a help uh, to these companies as well. So that would be really, really nice. So let me go back in from here. So you get the idea. And one thing I would highly, highly recommend is to try out this project. Again, you will understand how the open source project are being designed. You will also understand how you can help Rovi or take help from Rovi into your projects. And that's always a good idea. Just have a look and take a look what all filters and search queries. Maybe you want to search for a particular capital column whose value is equal to IN. And I want to apply for that. and there is nothing, nothing whose capital is equal to IN. So let me go ahead. So this is my code IN, so my bad. So a code who is equals to IN, I want to find all that data. So I find that. So filtering and everything, you don't have to write a build an admin console for that. That's, I love that. I'm definitely going to use it in some upcoming project. 
to make sure users understand everything nicely. One last thing I would like to mention here. So notice here there is a cloud logs, uh, there is a force refresh as well, and there is a table setting. You can click on this and provide all these settings. Uh, so maybe you don't want to have these fields, you can go ahead and work on with that. One thing I highly, highly recommend everybody to try out is these webhooks. This is something that makes it super, super powerful. So you click on the webhooks, you set up the cloud functions, obviously. Again, this is the project name. So just hit continue. It does everything within the browser. Open Firebase console, enable the billing. <laughs> My billing is not enabled in this project. And again, cloud functions are paid thing, but you can verify, enable the billing and can write your cloud functions within just here. That is one of the powerful thing. In case you are using a paid version of Firebase or you can add your credit cards, give it a try. It's a good project. All right. So I hope that this clears your little bit doubt on how you can contribute to open source project, how you can help them, few ideas I've thrown around, give them a test. And if you're using them, uh, let me know in the comment section what more you would like to see on that. Maybe an entire project on Rovi. Uh, we can try that out as a tutorial. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.